In my last video, I showed some super basics about making a tween in Photoshop to make an animated GIF. And I wanna show you a few other things that you can do to control it in this video. And then I'll have another one that um, shows more of a, a completed animation concept. So at this point, I'm simply moving um, simple shapes around just to show you some of the things you can do. So in the last video, I showed how to take a shape and just simply tween it across the screen using the timeline. Now I wanna show you, you can do things with more than one shape at a time. Um, for instance, I could add a, another shape. How about I add, um, how about a green rectangle? Okay, so let's say I want these to go to the middle and meet each other. Actually, let's make it a little bit more interesting. Um, so what you can do is multiple items here. So let's say I have my ellipse. Let's have this. We'll just have them both in the middle. I'll have them meet in the middle. And then how about I have... Um, um, some sort of an explosion text. Let's pick a different color. How about, I think bright red's fine. And let's pick a different font. That would be kind of more interesting. Okay, I like that bold one. So we'll do that. I can make it larger, get it however I want it to be. So I'll just leave it like this. And then how about I also have a yellow kind of a starburst behind that. So I can also do that in the shapes polygon tool and I want it to be a star. So there we go. So I'll start with this. Um, I want it to be a bright yellow. And then I can reshape this. Let's go to um, scale here. I'll just shrink it down. Okay, so I'll have kapow. Now what I wanna do is arrange my layers however I'd like them to be. So for instance, I want Kapow above that. And if I wanted a background color, I could do that. I think I'll just leave it as a white. That would be fine. The other thing I think I'd like to do, so I'm gonna hide my Kapow. That's gonna come up at the end. So I don't have to only tween, I can have things show up. So I'm gonna hide those two layers. They're created. And instead of having these start on the screen, I'm gonna have it start off the screen. So the rectangle, this first, frame. I'm going to move that off the screen. I'm going to move my ellipse off the screen. So that will be the first frame. Then what I can do is say new frame. And now I want to move those onto the frame. I have the second frame selected. I have my ellipse and I can just move that to the center. And then the rectangle, notice I select the item in the layers and then I move it in the, the page. Okay, so looks like they're a little off. I think I want the ellipse a little bit lower. There we go. So it's gonna start off the screen, it's gonna move onto the screen, and then I'll want Kapow to show. But first, let's get this moving. Now what I wanna do is tween it so it looks like they come in off the side. So I can go here and I can say tween, and I choose how many frames to add. Um, how about, let's go 10, that would be fine. And in this case, I'm leaving everything as is. I go ahead and say, okay. And I can preview this. Okay, so it looks like they come in off the side. That's fine. Now I'm gonna go to this last frame and I'm gonna go ahead and add a new frame. But in this one, I want to show Kapow and the explosion, and I want to hide my rectangle and ellipse. Now let's see how that looks. Okay, that works pretty good. Now let's say I want Kapow to stay on the screen a little longer. That's where this number underneath comes into play. So let's say I'd like it to be on there for, let's say, a second before it starts again. So that's how I control how long it'll stay on that frame.
So at this point, I can do some other things. Let's say I just want to demonstrate how you can fade something out. So what, let's have it crash. It says kapow, waits a second, and then it'll fade out. So I'm going to go ahead and um, new frame this one. But in this case, I want it to be invisible. Okay. Now I don't want it to be on one second anymore. I'm going to go ahead and say no delay. And in fact, um, well, we'll see how it turns out if it's going to grab the one second or no second when I tween. If it has a delay, we'll fix that. So now if I want it to go from fully uh, opaque to transparent, I choose the transparent layer. And in the layers, I choose the layers I'd like to fade out. So in this case, I want the polygon one. I'm going to change the opacity down to zero. And also for kapow, I'm going to make the opacity down to zero. So it's still there, it's just hidden. So now I want to tween these two frames. So I'm going to go ahead and say tween. And I just want to make sure that opacity is checked. That means it'll actually change the opacity settings as it tweens. So um, I think I could probably, I could do 10, let's just do five frames to fade out. I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to play. Now notice it did keep the one second there. We'll, I'll show you how to change a bunch at the same time. So I'm going to hit play. It goes here, kapow. And so if you wanted it fading out in slow steps, it could be done. I want it to fade out more smoothly. So I'm going to hit stop. The problem is that each one is holding on a second. So what I could do is go to each individual one and change it to no delay. However, that can be a little tedious. So you can change things across many frames by selecting them all and then changing one. To do that, I'm going to click on the first one. Then I'm going to hold down the shift key and click on the last one. So it selects a range of frames. Then I should be able to just grab one and change it to no delay and notice it changed it on all of the frames. Alternately, if you wanted to change various frames, you can click on a frame, hold down control, and then just select individual specific frames. But using the shift, you can easily select a range. So let's hit play and see how that looks now. Okay, and so once again, if I would like to um, export this, the first thing I would do is make sure to save this. So I'm going to go File, Save As. I'm going to call this Pow Demo. That's fine. And then if I want to export it as a GIF, I go File, Export, Save for Web Legacy. Make sure GIF is selected. Adjust any color settings if I'd like to and then hit save. Also, you can change the looping settings. Now I save that to my desktop, so I should be able to just preview it here by double clicking and viewing it in my um, photos viewer, or I could open it up in a browser.